have a beer for you today, and normally what would happen during Bible class is we'd be able to have a lot of conversation, and it would take a little bit longer, but I'll, I promise that I would keep it as brief as I could, and uh, so I even abbreviated what I prepared for you. Is on the topic of resilience, um, using Bible study, we're going through a book of the Bible, and then we hit on whatever topics we bump into, uh, but in this case, we've been um, having conversations within the congregation about, uh, well, just broadly speaking, our future, what, what we think we ought to be doing, what would be appropriate, and this would be a, a way to approach that. Um, this is, I know it's a psychological term, but it is not to it. So I'm going to read, uh, read and I'll, I might interject a little bit, but I'll try to stick to what's on the page, just for the sake of time. Resilience is the material property of being able to bounce back or spring to form or recoil. Applied to individuals and institutions, it refers to the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties. The secular sciences have observed strategies, techniques, and habits that anyone can implement to gain resilience. Resilience is one's ability to adapt to stressors and rebound after suffering um, through adversity, setbacks, and a wide array of stressful circumstances. Intentional attention to resilience sharpens us to be more effective and to find greater satisfaction in our lives and life together. So that's the congregation. Like our congregation in school, we can develop better habits of responding to challenges in ministry, parish, and classroom. And as Christians, we have a deep well of wisdom in Jesus' word that the world cannot give. Remember how Jesus told the disciples on the night he was betrayed, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So resilience is not the ability to avoid or preempt distressing situations. Good luck with that. While we can be attentive to ourselves and our congregation to develop physical and mental resilience, Jesus does not promise that our lives will be without trial, tribulation, and suffering. Our sin is a regular cause of distress. We sin against each other, making a mess of every human relationship. We suffer our abuse of each other, marriage, family, congregation, society. And because we are baptized into Christ Jesus, we can and should expect to suffer in the same ways he was in his earthly ministry and continues to be attacked and abused even now. As he writes, indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. The world, in the world you will have tribulation, will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. All right. So now I'm going to try to apply to you some of the uh, individual um, shortcomings, I guess we would say, that, that can lead to lack of resilience. But I think we can apply them to the congregation as well. So many threats to our resilience to both earthly and spiritual attacks. The first is being an achievomatic, <coughs> the word actually calls it that, or a type A personality. Right? These are people who think they have to do everything um, or nothing. Right? Physically, you cannot do everything. Some of you have figured that out the hard way as you get older, right? Yeah. Uh, and you will often meet resistance and fail. Spiritually, the church is the responsibility of God the Holy Spirit. Yes, he will use you as instruments in his work, but any good that happens in our congregation is his responsibility and his achievement. So if you know, uh, if something good happens, a great response is to God be the glory and thanks be to God. Right? Give him the credit. Uh, the next uh, threat is negative self-talk. How you think of the congregation of God's making is revealed in how you speak about it. If your default mode of speech is to tear down, disparage, discourage, and demean, you have opened up both yourself and the congregation for spiritual attack. Now, this is not to be confused with the accusation of God's law that shows us our sin, a necessary work uh, of the Word and Spirit. Sin is exposed to be healed by Christ's forgiveness. Right? So they could be confused. Another threat is catastrophizing. I had to practice saying that word. Yeah. Um, this is another mode of speaking that denies the promises of God for the Christian congregation. Doom and boom, you heard it this morning. It can be subtle where the failure of the effort of the congregation to care for faith and life is then projected to be a failure of the entire ministry. While real catastrophes can come, Jesus has promised to preserve whatever is necessary to keep you with him today and always. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them 
out of my father's hand. Turn the paper over. I hear you. All right, another threat. Again, the individual, but I think we can apply it to the church as well. Perfectionism is a threat that opens you up to attack. The perfect is the enemy of the good, said Voltaire. He meant it not in the spiritual way, but okay. Perfectionism is a pride or fear-based compulsion that either fuels our obsessive fixation on doing, doing something perfectly, or paralyzes us from acting at all. That would be, I'd be more than that line of thinking. Both of which can often result in the harmful neglect of other necessary good things. This man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, and from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool in the sermon. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. All right, so the perfection comes on Christ as his gift. It's not yours. We are God's workmanship, and he will accomplish what is good, right, and true in us, and even despite us. Our perfection is in Christ's forgiveness, not in our work. Um, another threat, when faced with great challenges of life and faith, we are tempted with avoidance or withdrawal. It's easier to surrender than to engage. Surrender is active, and yet you will consider yourself a passive victim. Or if the heat gets too intense, or you seek cooler climates, greener grass, or whatever proverbial utopia you falsely think exists. But no faithful congregation is without daily afflictions from the world, the devil, and our own sinfulness. But do not give up. The preacher to the Hebrews exhorts us to let, aside, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so again, another way of saying it's his work, not ours. All right, so resilience. That's, those are some of the threats. It's a trait, though, rooted in thoughts, choices, and behaviors, so you can be intentional about it. Spiritually speaking, the means for resilient people and congregations are already yours. The Spirit is at work daily to return you to Jesus, to listen to his word, and to guide your words and deeds. Immediately after Pentecost, the Spirit gathered church was given the gifts that make for resilient, I would say Christians, people, people who would be persecuted, slandered, attacked, and even killed, you know, thrown to the lions in the Colosseum. All but one of the apostles died a martyr's death and yet remained faithful unto death. So it's recorded that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So, again, this is abbreviated, but what are the common characteristics of resilient people and congregations? They have persistence in the presence of a can-do attitude that's grounded in trusting in Jesus' promises. They are motivated to accomplish meaningful goals for building up the body of Christ in word and sacrament. They have the ability to consider change to congregational traditions and explore new ideas to deliver Christ's gifts. The Christian congregation that is resilient embraces hope in response to all difficulties. That's, a, that's probably the most important thing that's on the church sheet. It's always not out in Christ. It makes an honest appraisal regarding its strengths and weaknesses, gifts and resources. The membership is expected to be faithful in hearing the word and receiving the sacrament. The congregation develops reasonable problem-solving skills, strategies, and techniques to, res to be responsive to attacks. It interacts effectively with sister congregations, other Christians, and its community. It is vigilant and mindful of its physical and especially spiritual well-being. And it is self-aware of its capacity to encourage and uplift or discourage and depress each other's spiritual state. So, anyone can acquire strategies to enhance their creature and resilience. By the way, this came out of a conversation uh, with a psychologist as to how uh, pastors can be more resilient uh, in the face of challenges themselves personally. But I thought it would apply to us too. And Jesus never ceases to preach his word to you, to convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching, so that you will be daily prepared to be resilient in spirit too. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. That's another note, but um, we're emphasizing today, is that attacks on the Christian church and her ministries um, are not from other people, they're from the evil one. They may come through other people, but they are not your enemy, the evil ones. So we'll be careful about that too. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with this congregation. You strengthen us daily through your word uh, to be resilient to whatever challenges come our way. We ask for guidance uh, by your spirit that we would uh, prioritize the ministry that you've given us to do here and uh, be willing to adapt and change as necessary uh, to the changing times. Strengthen us, enable us today to speak kindly and gently with one another, and forgive us for all our sins. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. How did you? How did you?